Hi there, everyone, and welcome to the Maths Tutor, the first webinar in a series of webinars that is going to look at exam technique for the Leaving Cert Maths and the Junior Cycle Maths paper also. This is the first webinar in a series of four webinars that you can tune into over the next couple of weeks. We are going looking at time management, so your best use of your times in the exam um, this week, and exam technique. The other webinars will look at an exam checklist, some time management, and how to avoid common errors in the exam also. So basically what we're looking at today is the changes to the structure for the junior cycle and the leaving cert maths paper for 2022. And these are the recommendations that we're putting forward to you based on our experience. So we'll be looking at both leaving cert and junior cycle. And as you will be aware, there have been some changes for the leaving cert in 2022. Getting straight in, in 2022, as was the case in 2021, students will have a choice of questions in both section A and section B of the exams. So this applies to whether you are studying Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Maths or Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths. Both papers will have a choice in paper one and in paper two. Our job, or your job, is to answer a total of six questions out of the 10 questions, where previously there would have been 10 questions out of 10 to answer and there were no choice. So the message that we're trying to get across today is choose your questions wisely and manage your time well in the exam, because what we don't want is you running out of time at the end with not all of your questions answered. So, looking at both paper one and paper two in the Leaving Cert Maths exam, both papers are a total of 2.5, two and a half hours um, each. So you have a total of 150 minutes. As I mentioned already, this year, unlike before last year, before 2021, you're gonna have a choice in both section A and in section B. So that's good news really in that you can do really, really well in this Leaving Cert Maths exam. You can get your top marks without knowing absolutely everything on um, the paper. So there's two main changes, the mark allocation for section A and section B, and the um, choice in the paper. So section A, as you'll be aware, is the concepts and skills section. This year, there's a total of 120 marks going for section A. So more um, more popularly known as the short questions, I suppose. So we have a total of 120 marks and you need to answer four out of the six total questions. So that means that each question is a 30 mark question in section A and 30 times the four questions that you do gives you a total of 120 marks. Section B, more often known as the longer questions. This is where you're tested on your context and applications questions. That's gonna be a total of 100 marks. So you need to answer two out of the four marks. So 50 mark questions in section B. Okay, so we're looking at uh, our time allocation here and we are going to give you um, our recommended time approach to your Leaving Cert Paper 1 and Paper 2. And we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible, as you will do on the day. We're saying divide your time roughly in proportion to the marks allocated. So your Section A questions are your 30 mark questions. They're shorter questions, so you spend less time per question. Your Section B questions are your 50 mark questions. So you're going to spend a little bit longer per question on the questions in Section B. And also, you want a little bit of time at the start of the exam and at the end of the exam for managing your exam. So at the start of the exam, you're going to give yourself a little bit of time. We'll go through it in a little bit more detail, but you're going to give yourself a little bit of time there to look over the questions, um, to suss out the paper, to take a minute for yourself to breathe and to have an idea of what questions that you're going to answer. And you're going to need a little bit of time at the end of the exam also to go back over your questions, to check for any mistakes, to verify some of your calculations. So we don't want to be writing right up until the minute the papers are being collected. Okay, so we've broken down the two and a half hours, the 150 minutes into the following time allocation per paper. 
So we're saying you're going to spend, try spend 10 minutes at the start selecting your questions. And I'm going to take you through an example of how to select your questions in a couple of minutes. So 10 minutes at the start, looking through your paper and getting a fair idea, getting a feel for the paper, getting a fair idea of what questions you will choose to answer. So you know your strengths and you know your weaknesses and you know which questions to answer to maximize your grade in the exam. Then for our section A questions, we have four questions to answer, remember? So we're saying give a total of 72 minutes to those section A questions. That's 18 minutes per question. So you have your watch on, there'll be a clock in the room showing the time. Make sure that you're separating your time and you're sticking to these times to um, get, the, get the most out of um, the paper and get the most out of your time. So 18 minutes per question in section A times four brings us up to 72 minutes. Section B, remember, those are your two longer questions, each of them worth 50 marks. So we're spending a little bit longer on each of those. We're recommending you spend 30 minutes on each of the two questions in section B. So that's two questions by 30 minutes. That's one hour in total, 60 minutes on your section B questions. So we've 10 at the start to select the questions, 72 minutes on your section A, 60 minutes on your section B, and that leaves you with eight minutes to spare at the end, and that's gonna be used as your safety net. That's where you're going to go back over your mistakes, go back over your questions, correct any mistakes, check all of your calculations very, very well, and you've eight minutes at the end to do that, okay? Now, some of you might be thinking to yourselves that you want to do an extra question. So, like I said, you will know your strengths, you will know your weaknesses. If you feel that you can answer perhaps five questions in section A and or three questions in section B, well, you will know that yourself, but you need to rethink your timing plan. So this timing plan that I'm giving you here, that time allocation is answering the four questions that are necessary in section A and the two questions that are necessary in section B. Okay, but you will know um, yourself what you are able for. Okay, choosing your questions. As I mentioned at the start, invest 10 minutes, and this is a very, very good investment of 10 minutes at the very start to do this. So it's 10 minutes really, really well spent. You're gonna eliminate two questions from section A and pick the four that you feel you will answer best. You're gonna eliminate two questions from section B and pick the two that you feel as I mentioned, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, you know the questions that you're gonna to pick to maximize your grade, so you leave two to answer in section B. So, just gonna take you through an example, okay, or um, a way, I suppose, of selecting your questions, and I'm just going to go through an example of section B questions, so four of the longer questions. You're gonna go through a similar process for the section A questions. Okay, so let's just say this was the first question that came up in, in our section B in our context and applications questions. So we have a look at it and we say to ourselves, yeah, we're fairly confident that we can answer that first part. We're just filling in the table um, based on the sequence here. So we're fairly confident we can answer that. We're fairly confident that we can answer part two or most of it. We can do a good job of answering that. On to B part one. We're fairly confident just by the initial look that we can answer that. I'm not so confident in part two, okay? I'm not saying that I won't be able to answer any of it, but I probably, I think just on my initial look that I won't do a great job on it, okay? But always, I'm always gonna write down something, but I feel that that might be a question that I won't do a great job on it. I'm not very confident in it. B part three, I'm fairly confident I can answer that. C, I'm pretty confident I can answer that. I'm just subbing in. And when it comes to D, it's a proof by induction. So I'm pretty confident that I can answer that. So you can see there, out of the seven parts, I am fairly confident that I can answer six of them. Okay, so I'm fairly confident that I can answer six out of the seven parts well. So this is a really rough guide, but we're saying that's approximately 86%. Okay, again, as I mentioned, this is a really rough guide and I will always write something down in every part of every question. On to the second section B, the long question. Again, this is a question on a trig function and calculus. So I'm pretty confident I can answer part A and part B well. I'm not so sure about the differentiation in part C and again, it's calculus in part D. So again, 
I'll write something down, but I'm not so sure that I can get to the end of that question. And again, part E, not so confident with that one because it's calculus. So for that long question, it's clear to see that I can answer two out of five parts well. And again, a rough guide, that's approximately 40%. On to my third question. Again, it's a functions question and there's a little bit of calculus in there. So on my first glance at this question, I'm pretty confident that I can answer those three parts well. Part two, not so sure. C, D part one is fine. And D part two, again, just on first glance, I'm not sure I can answer it well. So again, seven parts. I'm pretty confident that I can answer five of them. So I'm looking at approximately 71%. And the last long question in section B, I'm pretty confident with that first part, filling in the table and drawing the graph and writing my equation. But when it comes to part B part one, that looks like something that might catch me out. Part two is the same, C and D, not so sure. So again, we have seven parts. And on first glance, I'm fairly confident that I can answer three out of seven of the parts very well. So that's approximately 43%. So looking at my four questions in section B, my first and my third question have my highest percentages. I'm probably most confident in answering those two questions. And my second and my fourth question, those are the two that I'm going to eliminate. So that leaves me with question one and question three to answer in section B. Now, remember, you have 10 minutes at the start of the exam to choose your questions for section B, but also for section A. So that needs to be done fairly efficiently. And you're gonna use a similar method in section A to answer your questions. Your just initial glance of the paper, look through them, check which questions you think that you're more confident with, eliminate two out of six in, in section A and eliminate two out of four in section B. Okay, so moving on to the pre-2021 exam papers. So these are the ones that you've probably been practicing and you're doing sample papers. You need to be aware that pre-2021, there was absolutely no choice on the paper. So they were still two and a half hours long, but there was no choice on the paper. So you must, you needed to answer all six questions in section A and all of the questions in section B. So again, this is pre-2021 in section A. The mark allocation was 150 marks compared to this year, it's 120 marks, but you needed to do all six questions. So they were normally 25 mark questions in section A. In section B, the mark allocation was 150 marks. Compared to this year, it's going to be 100 marks and you needed to answer all two, three or four, depending on how many questions came up in section B. So when you're practicing your pre-2021 papers, so for this year's students, for you that are sitting the Leaving Cert exam in June, when you're practicing past papers under timed conditions, so when you're timing yourself doing the exam papers, what you need to remember is that there are typically 25 mark questions in section A. So you're gonna give yourself roughly 15 minutes. So when you're practicing your past papers, the section A questions, those 25 mark questions, you should be able to do them in 15 minutes. Your section B questions, the typical 50 mark questions, you should be able to do each of those in 30 minutes. Now again, there's various marks going for different questions in section B, depending on the year. So sometimes you will get questions with other amounts of marks. So as a rule of thumb, to figure out how many minutes to spend at each question is you're gonna divide the number of marks by five and multiply by three. So in other words, you're finding 60% of the marks and that will tell you how long to spend at the question. So if I find 60% of 25 mark question, that gives me 15 minutes. If I find 60% of a 50 mark question, that brings me to 30 minutes. I should be doing that question in. Okay, so just a very quick recap of what we've done so far. We've looked at paper one and paper two, both two and a half hours long, 150 minutes. Section A is your concepts and skills. That's your 120 marks. So at 30 mark questions, and you're doing four out of the six. You're choosing your four out of the six. Your section B, that's your longer questions, your context and applications, 100 marks. So two 50 mark questions, you need to choose two of them out of four. And as we mentioned, your 120 mark questions, your section A, your 30 mark questions, sorry, you're gonna spend 18 minutes at each of those. 
your section B, your two questions there, you're going to spend uh, 30 minutes at each of those. That gives you 10 minutes at the start to look back, look over the paper and choose your questions. And that gives you your eight minutes at the end as your safety net. Okay, and for the junior cycle students, so you are the first students, the first year to sit the new junior cycle maths paper. And there are some huge changes, I suppose. Um, the biggest change being that you only have one paper to sit. So previously it was a paper one and a paper two with different topics coming up in each paper. This year you have only one paper and you have no choice. You must answer every question on the paper. So judging by past papers and sample papers, um, it looks like there's about 13, 14 questions, all of varying marks. And this applies for both junior cert ordinary and junior cert higher level. So you have one paper with no choice. As I mentioned already, pre-2022, the junior cert had two papers, paper one and paper two. So with the timings for junior cycle, uh, the good news is that at the top of every question, you are given a suggested time to spend at that question. So if you stick to those timings, that will give you five minutes at the start to have a look over your paper. You've no questions to choose because you need to answer them all, but it will just give you five minutes at the start to breathe, to take a minute and to have a look over the paper. And it will also give you a bit of a safety net at the end. You can use your past papers and your sample papers to practice your timings. Just try your best to stick to those timings at the top and manage your time based on those suggested timings. Okay, guys, so I'm hoping that you found that quite useful. And as I mentioned, tune in over the next couple of weeks also for our extra webinars on an exam checklist, a little bit more on time management in the exam and how best to avoid your errors. Okay, as I mentioned, this is what we recommend for your exam technique based on years of experience. If you have any questions, you can pop them in the comments and we'll get back to you. Thanks for tuning in.